Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Mary Nixon, and I am a clinical social worker. And you are watching part one of our three point series Taking Care of You Facing Your New Breast Cancer Diagnosis During COVID 19. Today, we're going to talk about taking control. Many things are out of control right now in our lives. You may have lots of worries and concerns such as, I'm going to get COVID, treatments will reduce my immunity. Um, you may be worried about your family being sick or being unable to visit you if you get sick. You may be feeling anxious or depressed. You may be worried about your kids going back to school. A whole bunch of things might be bothering you right now. Today, we're going to talk about things that you have control of. Um, and of course, the three main things that you've heard many people talk about over the past six or eight months, masks, hand washing, social distancing. And I can't emphasize enough how important all those things, all those things are. Um, you know, masks can be very annoying. It's, it makes it stressful to go to the grocery store, forgetting your mask, bringing your bag, staying six feet apart. Um, all kinds of things um, that, you know, we never had to worry about before, but you can control where you shop, when you shop. Um, you can order food, um, be delivered. You can order takeout food for that matter, which kind of cuts down a little on the grocery store. But of course, anywhere you go, you do want to wear your mask. Um, and I don't know about you, but I've been on a quest for the perfect mask, the one that's most comfortable, most effective. I haven't found it yet, but I'm working on it. Um, hand washing. Um, shouldn't we have been doing this all along? We should all be washing our hands. It not only prevents us from getting COVID, but all kinds of viral diseases, colds, um, bacterial infections. Um, and the fact that everyone is now doing these things actually will cut down on all of those um, risks that we were taking even before we, COVID was part of our, part of our reality. Um, social distancing, this for me is probably one of the hardest things because it keeps us away from our friends and family. And it is really important to have that social interaction. So um, taking walks, eating outdoors, you know, seeing one or two people at a time, um, going to a park to have a meal rather than sharing food. Um, all of those things can be done. Um, and we do have to be pretty creative when we think about what are some ways that we can social distance, but yet still be social. So these are all the things that you have control of. Your physical activity, your nutrition, your meditation, where you go, um, laughter, mindfulness, support groups. So just a whole list of things that we have control of. And sometimes just knowing that can make you feel better. So physical activity, um, physical activity um, definitely increases your immunity, makes you healthier, and gives you more energy. Exercise can be done at home. Um, I believe that they just opened the gyms, but you may not feel comfortable going to them just yet. So you probably wanna continue doing your exercise at home or just um, outdoors as much as possible. Nutrition, very important and very much in our control. Any fruit, vegetable, and spice will support your immune system and your body in healing from breast cancer. Good hydration is very important and you probably want to drink one to two quarts of water a day. Um, and that could be in the form of iced tea, of seltzer, smoothies, mineral, uh, flavored mineral water, you might want to try lemon or lime in any of these drinks. Immune boosting foods. Um, here's a whole list of foods that are good for your immunity. Um, you can read these at your leisure. Some of them might be foods that you already have incorporated in your diet, or some of you might want to add. These foods in particular are good for breast protection. And I'm 
We know that uh, sauerkraut and cabbage in particular are good protections for breast cancer. Um, and I don't know about you, but I've never been a big fan of sauerkraut, but I kind of force myself to have just a spoonful a day. Um, I sort of think of it as medicine food. So all those things are very helpful. Um, I did have just a couple of um, suggestions for diet. Um, because obviously it's hard to look at this list and just you know start eating all this stuff all at one time. But if you think about a, a breakfast, you might have some black tea or black or green tea, um, oatmeal and granola, maybe throw some fruit in there. Um, yogurt and eggs um, are also good, apples, basically any kind of fruit. And you also want to think about incorporating things like garlic and ginger into your general cooking. Um, lunch and dinner, you want to eat your vegetables, just as your mom and grandma always told you. Um, again, uh, focusing on having cabbage at least a few times a week would be, would be good. Um, don't drive yourself crazy with this but um, just kind of thinking about these things would be helpful. Um, my source for this information is the 100, 150 Healthiest Foods on Earth. This is a book by Johnny Bowden, B-O-W-D-E-N. So you might want to take a look at that. Sleep. Um, it may seem that sleep is not in your control. However, there are things that you can do to get a better night's sleep or to help yourself fall asleep. Um, sleep hygiene um, incorporates uh, a good nighttime routine, maybe having a cup of herbal tea, um, doing a little bit of meditation before you go to sleep. Definitely want to cut down on any kind of screen time, and that includes um, cell phone, um, computers, iPads, anything where you're looking at a screen, um, you probably want to stop at least an hour before you want to go to sleep. Um, regular books, however, are great. Um, and even some Kindles that don't have the bright light um, would be helpful as well. Where you go, you definitely have control over that. Um, you can explore the nature in your area. There are hiking trails um, not far from here. Um, you might want to take up a painting class. Um, you might want to uh, take up hiking or you know, canoeing or kayaking, things that will get you out in nature. Laughter. Think about that friend or family member you know that always makes you laugh, um, just as a good storyteller. Think about funny TV shows or even some stand-up comics that are all over Netflix these days. Spirituality, um, very good for reducing stress and anxiety. If you are not a religious person, that doesn't matter because we all have a spiritual part of ourselves um, that if we kind of look into that can give us a stronger outlet and a stronger will to live. We are more than just our physical bodies. Yoga and meditation, um, a lot of research shows that physical functioning, sleep, and quality of life reduces fatigue and stress. Um, it's also been shown that yoga is useful for depression and anxiety. Um, so you want to find either a yoga class. Most of them are online these days. Um, there are some great things on YouTube. Um, yoga with Adrienne is one that I have watched myself, and she has about 50 different classes that you can take anywhere from 10 minutes to 60 minutes. Mindfulness. So our cancer experiences take up a lot of energies and mental focus, and this can drain us emotionally. So it's important to have some tools to help us create down and out times and to replenish and reconnect with who we are. So mindfulness is about recognizing our inner selves and recognizing what's going on around us without judgment, without trying to change anything. It's being accepting of ourselves um, both emotionally and physically. Even accepting our depression and anxiety as it comes up in our day to day. Fighting it causes more stress than accepting. Support groups. 
also there's been some research showing that support groups are very useful for reducing stress and anxiety. There's the Breast Cancer Network, which I highly recommend. Um, and lookgoodandfeelbetter.org. And I also wanted to just spend a few minutes on Hope Chest of Buffalo. As a survivor myself of breast cancer, I have found this to be a wonderful organization. It focuses on um, exercise and nutrition and also on drag or boat racing, which is sort of the core of Hope Chest. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get out in the boat this year, but we have exercise classes that have been available on YouTube and also on their Facebook page. If you'd like more information, you can check out hopechestbuffalo.org and click on the Contact Us button. Okay, thank you for joining me today. Um, I have one more thing I wanted to show you and um, this is a coping skill, it's called finger hold. And it's just a way of releasing negative thoughts and feelings. And it is based on an acupuncture technique. Through each finger runs a channel of energy that corresponds to the different emotional states. Um, This is a helpful tool for your daily life in difficult or challenging, challenging, challenging situations when tears, anger, or anxiety arise. So I'd like you to start by just gently holding each finger, the opposite hand, for two to five minutes until you feel a steady rhythmic pulse. And this will help move and drain blocked energy and bring a sense of balance and harmony to the body. So begin by deep breathing, by holding each finger. And you're working to bring the body, mind, and spirit to a state of peace and harmony. So breathe in deeply. Recognize and acknowledge the strong, or disturbing feelings or emotions that you hold inside yourself. Breathing out slowly and let go. Imagining the feelings draining out your finger into the earth. Breathe in a sense of harmony, strength and healing and breathe out slowly releasing past feelings and problems. I don't know if you can see my fingers, but you're holding them sort of firm, breathing in harmony, strength, and healing, and slowly breathing out, releasing past feelings and emotions. Breathing in harmony, strength, and healing, releasing past feelings and problems. Bringing in harmony, strength, and healing. Breathing out and releasing past feelings and problems. So continue to do this on each finger. You can use it, do it on one hand or both hands. And again, thank you for joining me today. Next week, we will talk about facing COVID and the happiness trap by Dr. Russ Harris. Thank you.